Just because I cannot see it doesn't mean I can't believe it. Today's video, we're going to be having a look at the Diamond Select the Nightmare Before Christmas Pajama Jack. After witnessing the glitz and glamour of Christmas Town, Jack Skellington returns to Halloween Town with visions of sugar plums dancing in his head. He concocts a plan to put on Christmas his own way using the spooky resources at hand, but it requires a lot of careful planning and scientific experimentation. This deluxe action figure of Pajama Jack from Tim Burton's Nightmare for Christmas features multiple points of articulation and a blackboard diorama. It was sculpted by Dave Cortez. Those curious as to how tall Pajama Jack stands, let me answer that question with giving you some dimensions. I'm going to stop the tape measure right there. Now I did actually include the display stand. Being the nature of the fact that these characters are quite spindly, it makes things a little difficult for them, for them to stand solely on their own. So I'm including the display stand in the measurements. From the bottom of the stand to the top of Jack's head, you're looking at 9.7 inches in height centimeters. That works out to be 24.6 centimeters tall. Jack comes with some accessories, not many to be honest. Most of the accessories are part of a greater picture. For the example here, I've got the flooring that will connect of course to other pieces to form the larger diorama. It has almost like a marbled flooring look here, alternating some colors of the white and the darker gray here. Kind of has the indications there of almost like a faux marbling effect. There are some peg connector points in which other things can of course attach to it. I won't lie to you because, well, you guys deserve the truth. I'm not really collecting these in any way, shape, or form. Uh, being the fact that the Diamond Select releases have come in both retail releases and comic book store releases. You may either get component pieces like this that will make up a larger picture, or you may not. And in some cases, I actually I have not been getting some of the diorama pieces. So as a result, much like the Ghostbusters lineup, I really haven't built them or really picked up the figures with the intent that I was going to be building a bigger picture. I'm perfectly fine. In this instance, I have things like, say, for example, the waterfall, the fountain, for example. I have that for a display piece. But other things, the much larger picture, I'm not as overly concerned about. That's just me. Also included is this little bedding here. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't really remember what the bedding is for. It almost looks like a little cat bed. It has the same scaling that it looks like it should belong to a larger picture. Maybe this is part of the the bigger city diorama scape of Halloween Town. It's got some nice feathering. It almost looks like little feathering effects that they've added to it. Painted in mostly this blue-based gray. Again, I don't really have much of a purpose for it. Actually, you know what? I'm wondering if Zero sits inside of that. That's just a possibility. I'm going to have to hold on to that thought process. The other thing he comes with included is this really neat looking easel board. Easel board's got some holly there adorning the top of it here. A little bit of nice crown work, a little scroll work also written, uh, done along the top there. You can see that Jack has started to plan out his Christmas strategies. You can see three busy days, sugar plum, visions, and some eggnog, which goes into chestnuts and open fire. The formula here would be hard to deduce, but somehow snowman times chestnuts over open fire divided by silver bells divided by, or is that the square root of 12 December the 25th, plus Sandy Claus equals Christmas. Little vague, but we know enough of this, the plan that he has in place. And of course, seeing the movie, to have a better idea of that as well. On the other side of that is this nice little schematic blueprint here of the skeletal reindeer. It looks like it has been applied by a sticker. I guess in some ways you could really peel that off if you wanted to. It's a little on the glossier side versus, say, the matte treatment that's been given to the front here. 
Um, this does not move back and forth. I thought this actually would have unhinged. Oh, maybe it does. Uh, see, it's just a little tight. And if it's a little too tight, part of me is telling me, part of myself is telling me, don't flip this over because it's going to break. I think I'm probably just going to leave it. I guess in theories, it does have the possibilities. See, I want to keep tempting it. I keep tempting fate by wanting to move it. I'm going to leave it. In theory, I guess it could move, but I don't want to risk the fact that that could break, so I'm just going to leave it be. Some nice wood grain there added to the overall brown paint scheme here of the chalkboard. Really nice side piece. And really, if you think of all the pieces, the side accessories that come included with all the figures, it's certainly one of the biggest things that we've gotten. Smaller, yes, but still equally heavy. He comes included also with the scientific method, a little book, which unfortunately doesn't have any writing on the inside. Something also unfortunate about it is it's heavy. It's all plastic. There's nothing quite light about it. And even though I can easily hold the book in my hand, that's no problem whatsoever. You can probably see where I'm going about to go with this. Now, I did manage to get this in Jack's hand. It's not an easy accomplishment by any stretch of the imagination. Problem is, a lot of these figures have really loose joints to start off with. Luckily for this, this is the hand that you really would want to use for the book. The hinge on the elbow so far is pretty tight. I don't know how tight it's going to stay, but for the time being, it's tight enough that I can get the book into his hand, something I didn't think I could possibly do. The key is really taking the thumb, and the thumb really sits inside the book, like that. If you get it everything just right and balanced, he does manage to hold the book. The problem is, though, this is not something that I think you would want to be doing for a long period of time. I would not recommend displaying him permanently with the book in his hand because you could probably see where this is going to go. That joint on his elbow is going to get really, really loose and eventually the arm is just going to drop. And I think if you're adding additional weight, say like for example the weight of the book, you're only adding additional stress and wear to that what could already be a down the road sort of thing, a loose elbow. So even though I do appreciate the fact he does come included with the book and he does have the necessary means to hold it, I just worry long term if he's actually going to be able to hold it. I'll probably just leave it off altogether when it comes to displaying it. I don't know how else they could have worked around this other than maybe if they had given a secondary, even though we don't really want to have a whole lot of extra adjustable necks on this figure, but if they had only taken like a little like clamp with a just, a just a neck and just a little adjustable stand that it could have held or propped up his arm. Just like a little clip. Something that would have held up almost in the same fashion, if I spin it around here, as this right here. It didn't have to be as adjustable, no. It could just be just a clear rod with a circular base. If that had been underneath his arm, it would have also aided to support the arm so it wouldn't be adding so much stress to it. Okay, we've talked a lot about that. Let's move along. So I do appreciate, again, that we get ourselves a book with Pajama Jack. I just worry long term. If you've had any one of these figures, sometimes their limbs get pretty loose, unfortunately, on them. And Jack being the spindliest of characters that you can get a figure from, again, I just worry that that's going to be a problem. Okay, I think we've talked enough about the book. I'm going to take off the, the clear display stand. It's the same stand as what we've seen with all the other Diamond Select re releases. In fact, recently, having a look at the real Ghostbusters Slimer, Slimer actually had the exact same display stand, kind of smoky, clear bottom base, and then adjustable kind of knuckle joints here that can be tightened if they get a little loose. Take a little screwdriver. I just always have a trusty screwdriver to the side here in case I ever need to go in and just kind of repair stuff before I'm about to review it. Luckily, the knuckle joints here are all tight, I didn't have to do anything with the screwdriver. And, uh, you know, it's going to stay in place. Jack is not really a heavy figure anyways, so I don't really have to worry about making that a, a tight thing right off the bat. Slimer it was a completely different scenario. Okay, let's have a look at Jack Skellington. I'm going to move all that sort of stuff out of the way. I can kind of keep the, the, uh, the chalkboard in place for the time being, just because I really like the look of it. Speaking of liking the look of it, must say I'm rather impressed with a this Jack Skellington. 
They've given him various different facial expressions over the different figure releases that we've gotten, but I have to say that this might be my all-time favorite. Just a simple smile. The paint is done really well, actually, on him. It gets a little chalky, a little built up here on the side, but that's certainly not enough to nitpick it too much. I like the fact that he's got, of course, his little, his little cap on there, his nightcap. And his nightcap is the same coloring as the rest of his pajamas. Kind of this kind of beige sort of cream color. In fact, he's a much lighter shade, one of the lightest shades of Jack Skellington, at least from a costume standpoint, because gone are really all the blacks, the purples, and other things that we've seen with previous Jacks. Here is a much softer, kind of much more warmer looking Jack to hold in hand. Speaking of also holding in hand, one of the benefits of this guy also wearing pajamas is the fact that his limbs are a little thicker as a process of, as a result of that. Um, the previous Jacks would have, of course, had his tuxedo on, or his little Jack suit on there, the pinstripe suit, and uh, the limbs would have been much, much thinner as a result. Especially in his legs here, his legs are a much thicker leg due to the fact, of course, of the outfit that he's wearing. I think the Pumpkin King Jack also may have shared similar leg parts here as this Jack here. Still, of course, has very small feet. Standing him can be somewhat difficult. Getting him in a dynamic pose can be even more tricky, but luckily making use of the display stand is certainly something that you may want to factor in. The back sort of has some additional kind of smudgings of paint here, but you can kind of write it off for the type of material that he's wearing. You know, some of the browns and a little bit of darker kind of blacks here are kind of rubbed on here around the areas of the wrinkles and the creases in his pajamas. Like I said, I really love the head sculpt. The head sculpt is by far one of my personal favorites. This may very well also be one of my favorite Jack Skellingtons. I think a lot of things work well on this particular figure. And luckily, like I said, he still has relatively tight joints. That's always a plus as well for me. As for his posability, um, he does have, let me just show you what's happening here. So at the very top of his head is one ball joint where you can move his head like this. He does also have a secondary ball joint at the base of the neck. You get one and he gets two in what could be best described as almost like a dumbbell uh, ball joint where it's you know a ball joint on either side. His arms hinge out and this kind of goes without saying I suppose if you've collected any one of these you be a little weary when you are moving the arms back and forth. You're not going to be getting, say, as aggressive with moving the joints on this guy as you would, say, the likes of some of the Ghostbuster figures where, you know, they're bigger, bulkier joints. You can be a little bit more rougher with them. So the arms move forward, the arms move back. You can swivel kind of sort of the, not the bolt, not the bicep, but really kind of the majority of the arm can be swiveled right there. He has a hinge in the elbow. You can also rotate the lower arm. And you can also rotate or somewhat rotate the hands. The hands are much softer, uh, much happier to see that they are using a softer plastic for the hands. Especially seeing as this Jack has such long extended out fingers, you certainly don't want these breaking, but it seems like they are using a little bit of a softer plastic for it, especially for holding the book. If you're resting a lot of weight on, for example, just these three fingers, you really don't want to be using a brittle plastic, and luckily they're not using a brittle plastic there. He doesn't have a waist swivel, but his legs do swivel around just by the nature of the way that they're connected. Let me just show you right there. See, there's a little peg right there, and it's sort of just a hinge back and forth. Pop that back into place. He does also have hinges in the knees. The hinges are all the same, all the exact same hinge joints, kind of like the capped joints. One side swivels, the other side swivels. The key, though, for successfully bending the figure is knowing which way the joint is going. If the joint is, say, facing this way, the last thing you certainly want to be doing is bringing the joints back and forth. That's going to break them. So you want to make sure the joint is facing the right way. The knees bend back and forth in a way opposite to the way it should really bend, but that's just the nature of the way that they, they move. And then his feet don't really seem to have much in the way of posability. They're just, they're just sort of there. Yeah, I must say, let's go ahead and take him and put him back into his, peg him back into his display stand. 
I must say this actually might be my favorite Jack Skellington that Diamond Select has released. I think at the time that I'm shooting this review, I'm going to ballpark it and say that they've released five. I think they released, of course, the obvious one, Regular Jack. They released the Pumpkin King Jack Skellington, a Santa Jack Skellington. And then they also released the one that had kind of the Dracula collar, if I'm remembering correctly. And then, of course, this one right here. Of all the ones that we've looked at, and by all means, certainly if you guys want to go back and have a look at all the ones that I had looked at up to this point, feel free to do so. Of all of them, I might say this one is my personal favorite. Figures I usually classify into two separate categories. There's the one side, the type of figures where you could display them, you could pick them up, you could play with them, and you could, you know, of course, have little kids playing with them, and they're going to be okay. They're going to be durable. You can move them around. And then you have the other types of figures, figures like this one here, for example. Being the spindly, more fragile nature of Jack Skellington, it's not a character or figure that you can really roughhouse with. As a result, people may look at these figures as being overly fragile. And while they are fragile only based on the type of character that Diamond Select produced the figures from, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with this Jack Skellington. Going into it, you sort of know what to expect. A figure that you have to be very careful when it comes to bending his limbs, but a figure that still looks good nonetheless. Jack Skellington here in pajamas, pajama Jack if you will, is a really neat looking figure. I know some people may look at it and think, well, if I can't really do too much with him and I have to worry about breaking his limbs, then I don't think that's a figure that's worth picking up. And I understand that, but I still do like the design choice and elements here that they've used for this particular Jack Skellington. He is spindly, yes, I will admit it. It is something that you can't be overly aggressive with when you are posing him. But the end result, though, is still a really well-sculpted, well-executed figure. And I think Diamond Select is still a good company to have helmed and manage the Nightmare Before Christmas lineup. Any one of the companies that had previously uh, handled the Nightmare Before Christmas lineup, say for example, NECA Toys, June Planning, also for the longest time, handled the Nightmare Before Christmas uh, franchise, the licensing for it. And both of those figures, those companies, handled them in their own separate ways. June Planning was a little bit more of a brittle sort of figure. I've done reviews on those if you guys would like to check them out. NECA Toys seemed to like they were a little bit thicker when they came to the limbs of Jack Skellington, but I'm pretty overall happy so far with what I'm seeing from Diamond Select. Again and again, as they release new Nightmare Before Christmas figures, they're always the ones that I first pick up when I see in comic book store shelves. And the Pajama Jack here is one of my all-time favorite of the Jack Skellingtons. I know purists will probably look at that and say, why would you possibly say that this is your all-time favorite? Wouldn't you think your all-time favorite would be Jack Skellington in his pinstripe suit? Perhaps, yes, but I really like the head sculpt and the paint applications that they've done here for Jack. Of course, there is some problems with him holding his book. Surprisingly enough, for final looks, once again, I've got the book in his hand, no problem whatsoever, but long-term displaying him could cause stress and damage to the joints, giving you a really loose arm in the fact that the book is really heavy. I can't think of how they would have gone around fixing this problem. I mean, they could have made the book maybe out of paper, but I mean, that's not going to be a very durable book either. Instead, they used a slightly heavier plastic, but I'm surprised, actually, that Jack holds the book as well as he, ha as he does. Providing that you've got the book resting on his three fingers and the thumb is sort of supporting the inner spine of the book, he holds it perfectly fine. I just don't think I would display him long term in this particular pose. Good news though, if you guys are interested in picking up Pajama Jack for yourself, he should be now available in comic book stores. You could have picked him up already leading into the Christmas season, or the beauty of Nightmare Before Christmas figures is you can pick him up all year round because Diamond Select are always continuing to release them. Today, once again, we are having a look at the Pajama Jack from Nightmare Before Christmas. If you haven't, hit that little subscribe button down below. What are you waiting for? More videos, including including some more Nightmare Before Christmas figure reviews, will be coming soon to this channel, so stay tuned for that. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.